bringing you highlights from round five of the Bosch 1990 British Sidecar and Four Stroke Championship. We're starting with the Sidecar Brigade. And I think it's fair to say you don't have to be mad in this sport, but it certainly helps. Judge for yourself as we take a look at some of the top competitors. This is the current British champion from 1989, Paul Millard, who has a new passenger within this term. That's Jason Peters, who replaces Paul's brother, Mark. At this stage, there's some 27 points adrift of the current championship leaders, Chris Etheridge and his new partner, Nick Brace. And Etheridge is hoping not only to consolidate his position, but indeed go one better than the runner-up spot he's now taken for each of the past four years. Well, one of the main contenders from the Anglia region is Sean Mallows from Tiptree in Essex and his new partner, the very experienced Shane Skeets. They're expected to do well on this, their local track, but they'll be out to avoid the pile-up they encountered here last year. The charge down the hill and it's every man for himself. And all, all one outfit roll, two outfit rolls and uh, an incident there at the uh, start of that race. Also up there with the top crews, Steve Pisani and Ray Parfit from Colchester. They're among the most consistent combinations in the championship. They've scored in all four rounds so far. And just to add a bit of spice, they'll be carrying our special helmet camera to give us a rider's eye view of the racing. Well, in the first race, Millard, the champion, stalled early on, but even so, he still came back to win with Etheridge second. Etheridge now leads the championship by 24 points as they go into race two. Your commentators are Chris Carter and Dave Allen. They're under starter's orders, all eyes on those metal gates, they'll drop forward, no one can cheat, and away they go. This is the start of the second leg, and down the hill they go, the charge of the light brigade is on, and into the valley of whatever it is, wrote the, uh, well, not 300, but uh, 29 outfits, all battling for points. Down one side of the uh, valley and up the hill again. Well, remember the last one, Paul Millard, the reigning champion, stormed to a convincing victory. And, uh, well, he's got a bit of work to do. Fourth place I made him, I think. Uh, my eyes didn't deceive Jim me. Jim Mogi, the leader at the moment. Number 26, Jim Mogi from the northeast, the early leader. And uh, well, that's Sean Mallows, I think, uh, in second place. The local boy from Tiptree, who finished fourth in the first outing. Chris Etheridge is third, and Paul Millard is in fourth spot. And can Mallows take the lead? The local boy from Tiptree, well, he does indeed. And it's a moment of glory. Now, can uh, Jim Mogi hold off the horde behind? Well, the answer is he, yes, he can because Etheridge, there, and Etheridge goes for the inside line and charges through to take the lead. Millard, though, he's being held up for a moment or two. Mallows is there. And Etheridge goes through. And there is the man, uh, number one, the man who won the first race. Chase Peters, his passenger, who's uh, had a vertebrae injury, he actually had to be lifted off the outfit. Uh, when the, they came to the end of that first leg, well, there he is. I mean, the crew men say that these uh, sidecar passengers are monkeys. It's uh, no uh, disrespect of their mental ability, is it, Dave Allen? It, Not it, at it means all. They leap around. Oh, an accident it's their here. their climbing ability. And we've lost... Uh, there's number five. Andy House. Uh, Andy and House and Mark Nesbitt. They uh, finished in third place in the first leg. Well, they all look a bit cracked and improved, but they're on their feet, and that's good news. Great to watch them make this next jump in anyway. the Mallows stretches the gap, all goes into orbit, entered behind Mallows in third place. The charge is on down the hill. Well, we said in the first race, Sean Mallows used to be a, a wild and crazy guy. He was a bit uh, reckless in his youth. He's still only 21 now, so he's hardly an old man, but uh, he's calmed down uh, quite a lot, hasn't he, Dave? Certainly has. He said it uh, again, I've mentioned it before, but he's finding it a bit much getting hurt every week. He likes to feel a bit comfortable on Mondays. Yes, there, there comes a time with everybody that, uh, when the pain... Oh, and Etheridge goes for the inside line, they're side by side, and Etheridge has the better line, he will go through. Absolutely, there was no alternative there, but Mallows, no respecter, and he goes back out in front again. Absolutely superb, tremendous riding there by Sean Mallows. He had no alternative but to let Etheridge go through, Etheridge had the better line. But Mallow said, no, no, my friend, I'm the leader and I'm going to get back in front. Looks like also Mallow's got a better bike. 
a chance to see it again here you see Etheridge on the inside line he was level over the jump and he held it there a brave move so Mallows had no chance to come back he had to ease off because of the line tightened up but he came back cut through on the inside ignore Paul Millard who was there just cut across his front wheel blasted up the hill kept the power on moved across the front of Etheridge and Sean Mallows back in front certainly that's the sort of form we've seen from Mallows this season had one or two engine problems but uh, not really the crashes we've seen in the past some great rides and uh, look at that little battle behind the second and third and Millard is pushing and pushing and pushing and Chris Etheridge will remember only too well exactly what happened in the first leg and uh, Millard just uh, losing a little bit of ground but that's no problem he'll just come charging back eating the dirt closing on to the rear tyre of the second place man Etheridge the dirt just coming up a little bit more in this second leg a look at Mallows he really is quicker into that corner. and now there's Paul Millard number one the reigning British champion and I say reigning he's been there so long he's been there since they started sidecar racing almost four, four years. years four years and a, uh, a long time to hold a series because it's a uh, maybe to win a thing four times but uh, to actually be, be consistent to stay there for four years running that really means a top driver and this is where Etheridge had and look he's coming level again and exactly the same thing and he goes through to take the lead a little earlier this time those downhill jumps very steep favor the brave now can Sean come back no he lost too much ground well, interesting there, really, because Sean Mallows is quicker into the bomb hole just before the start and finish, or before the finish line, and quicker out, and you would have thought that would have made him braver down the hill. But Chris Etheridge just... Uh, oh, and, well, I was going to say Mallows has lost second place. He hadn't, but Millard was right there with him, and Paul Millard is about to swoop. Now, whether Sean is getting tired, I don't really know, but uh, he's... Uh, losing ground to the race leader and Paul Millard is all over him looking for a gap first one side then the other and he's going for the inside line and this is brave and a superb piece of riding there but Mallows is ready for him and again Mallows was ready he got the answer he knew he was going to beat on the better line well that was a superb piece of riding by both men here a chance to see uh, again on the inside line is Millard on the outside is Mallows of course uh, when you're doing this when you're trying to make an overtaking move it's on not on the better line you see Mallows here still on the best line ready to cut back and cross goes through again on the inside Millard there had to take the wrong line to get past but uh, didn't Sean Mallows still holding off the reigning British champion and all the time Chris Etheridge is just stretching the advantage and uh, well we uh, we saw in the first race that uh, Paul Millard can come charging back and he's on the inside can Mallows hold him up yes he can is the answer oh and no well I thought Mallows had got him and I think Mallows thought he'd got him but Millard had other ideas and Millard in fact came so close that poor old John Mallows I think probably knocked himself out of gear and had trouble finding a gear then, didn't well, he? Certainly a pretty hard drive, as you can see there. No quarter given in this race. He's through to where he wants to be, back behind Etheridge again. He knows he's got to finish in front of Etheridge, at least in every race remaining in this series. Well, again, there we can see it. Look at this. It's going to be an almost contact here. Millard on the inside. It looks as though he's not got the, the right line because Mallows is quick and he comes right across right across the front wheel and you can see Sean Mallows getting in all sorts of trouble there in all the rough stuff and as I say I think he may well have missed a gear then but whatever the thing was the situation is the leader is now Chris Etheridge number two Paul Millard is number one in second place and there's the local boy Sean Mallows having a super ride in third spot well let's have a look at uh, what it's like out on the circuit and our man carrying uh, the uh, camera that's Steve Pisani well uh, old Steve is showing us how the opposition is going past and they're quickly they're going really. and of course that's Herbert Burt has just gone past oh so indeed yes indeed that's and the 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 out to number six so uh, uh, the charge continues for them and uh, they're coming up uh, yes and uh, Steve Pisani will be in about uh, well something like there he is just in the screen 
that's fairly close to uh, Herbert and Burt. There you are, you see how close it is. Uh, how exciting it is now for the race track. And it really is a, it's a bumpier rut than it looks. Uh, it's a pretty there, so. bumpy ride. It certainly is, but uh, very good camera pictures. It's just what it's like, the dust stopping your view. Very hard to see. And uh, you can see, just looking at uh, number six there, the after Graham Herbert and Gary Burt, just how infrequent they actually ride on two wheels. It's either the, uh, the sidecar wheels on the ground, and uh, Gary Herbert pulling away. He's up into uh, tenth place, I think, now. The ninth spot, in fact, says the lap scorer. Thank you very much indeed. So, ninth place now for Graham Herbert. He's certainly got his work cut out here. Etheridge with uh, the crews there fighting for a few points, just a handful of points, but uh, everything very important to these lads. Yeah, I think we must emphasise the point, although the lead is catching them, these are not uh, tail enders out of the running. They are battling for championship points. And look, here we go. Now, look, look at them. I mean, really, this is where you need a helicopter, isn't it? And of course, it's very, very dusty now. It's difficult to see as well. And the charge is on down the hill, round the tree. Now Etheridge must, if Etheridge can carve his way past those men. And there's Etheridge in the green there. There's Millard behind him. Etheridge with two. He's got past three or four of those tail enders. There he is on the inside. He's got another one. And Millard's being held up now. And again, one of the slow men, the passenger, just telling the driver move over one of the quick men's coming through. And that, I think, in the long run, helped Etheridge more than Millard. Probably did, because uh, he overtook him there on the fastest part of the course and enabled him to get away. Quite a big gap can be built up now. Back with Steve Pisani, of course, he's got the, uh, the camera on his helmet. See Millard at full tilt there. See, he's very quick out of the course. Oh, and look, there is the second place man, Millard. It's not over yet. Well, he's getting closer and closer. There's Nick No Hands, that's why he's called No Hands. <laughs> he thinks he's got time to wave, but uh, Paul Millard's still doing a lot of work there behind him. Well, that really was incredible. I think I want my feet tied on and both hands tied off. <laughs> Esri said, storming through. Can Millard get him? Where is Millard? Nick looking relaxed. Well, you were saying before, uh, Dave, uh, that the good passenger is worth literally his weight in gold, and he is. And uh, then both men actually had a look to see where Millard is because they're in the final run into the flag, down into the bump hole, up the other side. The checkered flag is ready, and this time Chris Etheridge takes the checkered flag, but right on their heels. Paul Millard and the heroic Jason Peters, who really does look in an awful lot of pain. A tremendous ride there from Chris Etheridge and Nick Brace, restoring their 27-point lead in the Sidecar Championship over Millard and Peters. Join us again.